The month of January is probably the most difficult time of the year. The holidays have just passed, and even though the days are getting longer, they're still dark and dreary because the sun barely comes out. And I can understand why this is a time of reflection for many of us and why people set New Year's resolutions. I do not set New Year's resolutions. I never have. But right now, I'm resolving to change that. And one of the very first resolutions is, is to get Kenai and I a little scenery in. So we're going to head off to Valdez for a moment. And when I get back, we're going to talk about some of the things that I'm resolving to change this year here at the cabin. given Kenai his cookie, but I'm hungry. Let's head into the pantry and see what I have. work. I'm not actually going to eat this, <laughs> but
But one of the things that I need to do this year is take better care of myself. I was looking back at some of my videos as I was editing some of the more recent ones, like episode 58 outside and I had my big hood on, which really just brought the focus in on my face. And what I noticed is, is that I have lost a ton of weight since arriving in Alaska and my face just looks incredibly gaunt. And I've noticed it also in how my clothes are fitting. Like this skirt, for example, I actually have this sweater on to add a little extra weight around my waist or to add a little extra circumference, if you will, around my waist to keep my skirt from slipping down. So even though I have freezers full of food and the pantry's fully stocked, I have a tendency to gravitate towards things that I can eat quickly. And like I said, I'm not actually gonna cook these things up in combination, though the blueberries and the spam might go good together. And I will be doing an uh, upcoming video showing about three to four different recipes using Spam. So be sure to check back in for that. But typically what I'm doing is I'm grabbing a handful of candy and just going on with my day. I've been known to exist on solely, or I should say, I've been known to survive solely on candy and coffee. And if you can take a look in here, you'll see all the soft caramels are gone and I'm just left with hard candy, which I typically, try to stay away from um one i'm i prefer the chewy candies but two is a few months back back around thanksgiving when i had to have emergency dental surgery it was because i actually cracked a tooth on a piece of hard candy and when i was a teenager i'd actually extracted a tooth out of my mouth by biting down on a piece of hard candy, the tooth actually got stuck in the candy itself. I was in a conference, believe it or not, when this happened for an organization that I belonged to in high school. So I couldn't do anything. I actually wound up just shoving that tooth right back up into my mouth and going on like nothing had happened. The tooth stayed put until years later when, um, you know, I cracked that tooth. So one of the things that I've done over the years to protect my teeth, and I mentioned this to the dentist when I went to go have my extraction done, is I make my own mouthwash. And I'm gonna show you the simple recipe that I use. When I mentioned it to the dentist, he was actually rather pleased to hear about this mouthwash. He saw no issues with what I'm doing and said that, yeah, it sounds like it's a good recipe and wise to do. Now, I'm not saying that every dentist would agree with this, and I'm not saying that everybody should do this, so check with your own dentist before proceeding. Um, but this is what I've done, and it has worked well for me, and it actually has kept my teeth incredibly healthy and my gums strong. Um, when I go in and they do a periodontal exam, you know, they always come back and say, yeah, there's no uh, gum disease present. So that's a good thing. The recipe for a mouthwash that I developed about 10 years ago and have been using ever since is a combination of essential oils, iodine, and vodka. Now, the reason I'm using vodka is because I'm using essential oils, I need something to act as a carrier for those essential oils. If you're not um, comfortable using vodka, then I recommend that you look for another mouthwash uh, solution because off the top of my head, I cannot think of what else you could replace the alcohol with. And the reason that I'm using vodka is because it has the lowest acidity level out of all the alcohols. This one is five times distilled, so it basically has no flavor to it, at least in my opinion. Now this is comfrey oil that I've made out of comfrey out of my own garden back in Colorado. You can either buy comfrey oil or you can produce your own. To produce your own, you're just gonna take the leaves from the plant and the stems and you're gonna do it early in the morning. And that way they're gonna have as much nutrients as possible in them. You're gonna lay those out for a few days on a tea towel, let those dehydrate. They should be wilted, but not dried completely. Then you're gonna go ahead and just break them up and pack them into a jar. And then I filled this jar with MCT oil. Now you could use olive oil, 
but I prefer MCT oil. And then you're just gonna let it sit for about six weeks. And then you're gonna strain off that oil and store it in a jar. Typically you'd wanna store this in an amber jar out of direct sunlight. If you're not familiar with comfrey, it's easy to mistake it for another plant that looks very similar, which is borage. Um, here I've listed out some of the identifiers for you so you can distinguish one from the other. So comfrey is also known as knit bone. It has this unique characteristic about it that it has historically been known to mend bone and to knit together cells. So a lot of times you'll see people that are using it on an open wound I personally do not recommend that you use it on a deep wound. If you have a wound that's almost healed and you just want to speed up that healing process and prevent any scarring, then I recommend using comfrey oil. But you don't want to use it on a deep wound that could potentially have um, some bacteria in it because it is such an effective healer that it'll close that wound up. And then what you're going to find is that you could wind up turning that wound septic and get a blood infection and that could be very serious. So again, only use this on wounds that are superficial or just about healed up and then you'll find that this is a good thing for you. Now you don't want to ingest comfrey. It used to be common for people to take comfrey internally, but it has been shown to be hard on the liver and potentially uh, have low levels of toxicity. So I avoid consuming this internally. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take one tablespoon approximately or one swish of vodka and into that I'm going to put in about a half a teaspoon of comfrey oil and to that we're going to add two drops, just two single drops of oregano oil. This is going to act as an antibiotic and then I'm going to add five drops of clove. Clove has historically been known to help numb pain as well as to help fight uh, periodontal disease or gum disease. And then I don't add the iodine into the mixture, but I actually put two drops of iodine directly on my tongue and I swish up the mixture of the mouthwash, take a swig of it, swish it around in my mouth for as long as I can stand it. It's no different than oil pulling, um, which they recommend you do for 20 minutes. I personally cannot do it for that long. Um, for as long as I can stand to be sitting there swishing it around, I will. And then dispose of that. Do not dispose of it in your drain. Because of the oils, you don't want to take the risk that that's going to clog up your drain. So I just discard of that, you know, into a tissue and throw it into the trash. Or in my case, because I have a dry cabin, I just do it into uh, my slop bucket, if you will. And I do this twice a day. So after I brush my teeth in the morning and then again at the end of the day. And as I said, the dentist has approved it that, you know, did my tooth extraction and also the dentist that I used previously when they have checked for gum disease, they have always said, yeah, your teeth are looking great. No gum disease and no cavities. So the iodine will help to fight cavities and um, so will the oregano. So and I'm sure the alcohol does something for it too. But as I said, don't drink this. You don't want to ingest this. tripping over Kenai and landing on the wood stove. And when I landed, I landed so that my right hand was on the wood stove, meaning that I couldn't use 
my other hand to hoist me up. I wasn't close enough to the water barrel next to the stove and I wasn't able to then, you know, reach onto the counter to regain my balance. And it took a moment for my brain to register how to right myself off of the wood stove and uh, free my hand from that hot surface. It was about 250 degrees at the time that I landed palm down on the wood stove. But I treated it with a simple solution of raw honey and lavender oil. Now, the lavender oil is again, an essential oil that is known to have healing properties to it. And the raw honey, believe it or not, has antibacterial properties to it. So what I did immediately though, was I rinsed my hand under tepid water. You may have been taught that you burn yourself, you immediately run and run your hand under cold water. Well, if you have any experience in the kitchen, you might be familiar with the process of blanching and then immediately dropping your blanched item into an ice bath. If you've ever blanched something with the skin on it, such as fruit, say a peach, uh, that you wanna skin quickly for canning, you'll know that by that immediate shocking process that it will release that skin and cause that skin to come off easily. Well, when you burn yourself and then you immediately run your hand under cold water or put ice on it, you're doing the same thing. So I don't recommend that you run your hand under cold water. What I recommend is using lukewarm or tepid, meaning just one to two degrees below room temperature water and slowly bringing down the temperature on your hand. Then you wanna pat your hand dry. And then what I do is I just get a gauze bandage and I apply the honey directly to the gauze, put a few drops of essential oil over that, put that on and wrap my hand up, whether it's a Band-Aid or a bandage, doesn't matter. And then the next day you'll find that your wound, your burn will be non-existent. So I have used this again for years. I have burnt myself in ways where you would think that I would have blisters or scars and overnight they are magically erased. Now, one thing about this is that you will still have some discomfort overnight from the pain as it heals. And so I recommend taking, you know, an over-the-counter uh, pain reliever such as Tylenol, ibuprofen, or something along those lines. And you will be amazed at how well this works. The next day, I, I filmed my hand the very next day and there was no scarring, no blistering, no nothing. In fact, at this point, it's been a couple weeks. And um, just the other day, I noticed I had a little dry patch right here next to my thumb and that was it. So this is one of the other things that I've done to take care of myself. But I also need to just take better care of my health in general. Now I am one to take vitamins on a daily basis, but there are times that I slack off on that and I forget. And what I've noticed is, is that if I start to feel where I'm just not really motivated and I'm feeling kind of sluggish and like, you know, what I found is if I just take my vitamin D, which this is 10,000 IU, so one of these a day, along with some K2, which is in my multivitamin and then vitamin C, of course. Um, if I take that, I find that by the time that's absorbed into my system, those bah humbug, uh, mood swings or whatever you will have gone away and, and I'm back to uh, giggling and laughing about whatever, you know, has crossed my mind at the moment. So in Alaska, this is a huge thing though, because the sun is rarely out, the days are short and the nights are long. Um, and if you're like me and you're working from home and you're just not getting that much sunlight, vitamin D is essential. And like I said, you'd be surprised at how much this can lift your mood. that my hair 
just doesn't look as healthy as it did when I first arrived in Alaska. Some of my earlier videos, like the Don't Buy Land in Alaska video, my hair, I was like, oh yeah, I like that. But recently, my hair has been so dry and it just does not feel healthy. Believe it or not though, I haven't had a haircut in about 10 years. I know you would think that somebody who hasn't had a haircut in about 10 years, that their hair would be a lot longer than mine has been. But I know that I needed to cut my hair and I need to cut off several inches where it just seemed to be the driest and not in the best condition. So I gave myself a haircut the other day and I recorded myself doing it. Can't believe I'm showing you this because yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing, honestly. But as you can see, I didn't do too bad of a do job because A, I can still put my hair up in a ponytail and I personally think that it turned out okay. So haircuts are not as hard as you might think. So if you're living by yourself or you just wanna save a little bit of money, there are some videos that you can look up on how to do haircuts. Now there's one that's very popular called the Brad Mondo uh, or butterfly haircut. That's not what I did. I actually gave myself a haircut that frames my face and then I just cut it um, to where the unhealthy parts were removed. So I do wanna grow my hair out though. I want my hair to be nice and long again. So this year I'm going to implement a new way of taking care of my hair. And I'm not gonna share with you just yet what I'm doing, but I this time next year we'll do a revisit to this and we'll see if what I've done has allowed my hair to grow out and become nice and healthy. And again, I know my diet is part of that as well because like I said, I am a workaholic and I just tend to not take the time to slow down and cook something. So the recipes that you're seeing me cook in my videos, a lot of times that might be the biggest meal that I've made all week. And otherwise I'm just quickly throwing something together. So I need to learn to take care of myself as well and to slow down a little bit. And you know, these winter months are a good time to be doing that, to slow down, to reevaluate and to come up with some resolutions on how we can improve our health and, and make ourselves uh, better. So I wanna thank each and every one of you though for joining me today. And I wanna remind you to uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked the content that I shared with you today. Again, it not only helps me, but it helps you because it'll make sure that YouTube recommends the videos that you like as opposed to just throwing random things into your recommended feed. So until next time, please take care of yourself. Let me know if you plan on implementing any of these things or if you have any remedies that you use at home yourself that you uh, would like to share with everybody else. And until then, I will see you next time. We'll see how it goes. So hence why I'm wearing, um, you know, just an old shirt that it, I'm sure this is, you know, a man's shirt that I picked up at the thrift store because uh, I always believe in having, you know, just a shirt around for a smock. So, hence the smock. It's not that I'm going army brat here. Um, but, yeah. Did I mention this was my first time ever cutting my hair myself? Yeah, I should, I should mention that. Yeah. Oof. One nice thing about this haircut is I live alone in the woods. It's like, watch me make a fool of myself <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> in the back of your hair is hard, especially when it's short. Do not use this as an instruction video. Maybe use it if you're a hairdresser and you want to do a video about how not to cut your hair. <laughs> yeah, please don't use this as a video of how to do your hair. Problem is I cannot see what I'm doing. Okay. People who are deaf 
perception issues should not be cutting their own hair. I'm going to cut off my own fingers before I actually get my hair cut. Ugh. Yeah, that's good haircut and technique right there. Nope. Don't, don't do this, folks. Don't do it. <laughs> 